I'm not going to make a joke about time being a flat circle because this is like <laughs> very serious. That's it. That's my intro. Hi, I'm Amanda. You're watching Small Entertainment. And today we are talking about the TikTok account John's Bones and uh, the company John's Bones. My main goal here is making sure that he's not eating my cord, actually. If you guys hear sounds in the background, um, I have a puppy, his name is Hermes, he's a brat. And um, I was not gonna tell you guys that I got him until like, it's been like a month or two, but uh, I feel I should tell you so that you uh, know he's here and that's what the sounds are. But also if you see the scratches on my arm from his puppy teeth because he is a baby shark. You don't think that I like got in a fight with a mountain lion or something. But today we were talking about John John, uh, the TikTok account John's Bones and the company John's Bones. And I want to talk about this as seriously as I can truly, um, being as someone who is, I am not an osteologist, I'm not an anthropologist, I'm not an archeologist, I am a YouTuber. And I am someone who is very intrigued and fascinated by, um, God, this sounds bad when I say it, but like fascinated by the rituals and practices surrounding death and that process in different cultures and things like that. So um, I've previously taken um, study of the sociology of death and dying class in college and things like that, but I am not qualified to sell bones, but neither is any of these people. But before we move forward, I'm going to start my morning with today's sponsor. Mud water. Apologize for the sound in this ad read. I am filming this literally right next to my refrigerator. Mud water is a coffee alternative made with four adaptogenic mushrooms and Ayurvedic herbs. All you have to do is add a tablespoon to hot water, stir, add in whatever you'd like, and you're good to go. I have mentioned this several times before, and every time I say it, you all make fun of me, but I am in fact trying to cut down on caffeine because I have intermittent insomnia. Super fun and exciting, okay? But I am also begrudgingly a morning person and mud water is a great way for me to get my daily dose of caffeine without getting a crash or jitters later on in the day. Mud water very kindly sent me their starter kit, which includes 30 servings of their mud, their rechargeable frother, and a sample of their vegan coconut creamer. Pins are resealable and great for reusing after you finished off your mud. Hot water, just plop it right on in. Put this in at an angle. Do not turn it on before you put it in. That's a great way for make everything go sideways. And then just, now you can add whatever you want to your mud water, but I prefer unsweetened almond milk. Not sweetened almond milk, sweetened almond milk is awful. You can try mud water today by getting 15% off your starter kit by clicking the link in my description box or using code SWELL. Cheers, and thank you again to mud water for sponsoring this video. Don't want to make light of the fact that these are like once human beings and specifically a lot of them are marginalized human beings who in John's own words, were part of a lower class of people and a lower caste system. In terms of where the bones come from, they typically came from China, Russia, or India. India being one of the largest suppliers. In India, there was a government-sponsored program that allowed individuals to donate their bodies to science. Unfortunately, throughout history, this ended up being individuals of lower caste systems or as seen as the untouchables in society. And Therefore, these are not ethically so like, oh God, uh, I don't want to negate the fact that these were once human beings and that this is, whether it's legal or not, like it's not okay. Like there's a moral quandary here and it makes me uncomfortable that he seems to have this like affect in all of his videos and like, oh gosh, like so much of the TikTok content following this is people being like, time is a circle and TikTok and Tumblr is just like the same thing because Tumblr had a grave robbing witch. And again, I don't wanna make light of that situation either. That was grave robbing, that was not okay. This is more insidious to me because like, well, I don't wanna say more insidious, grave robbing is horrible. And then there was like this whole thing about like, no, I bought it from a flea market, this 17th century Victorian orphan. It's like, what? No, stop it. What? Uh. Anyway, I'm also not qualified to talk about that other than the fact that I like uh, lived on the hellscape that was Tumblr. But no, the thing with John's Bones is that it's, it's more insidious to me. Like both are morally wrong and morally repugnant. Neither is okay. One is just more like, oh yeah, grave robbing bad. This one is more insidious because it's it's all technically legal and that's what bothers me more about it because just because something is legal doesn't mean it's right. I just, I don't want to make light of the fact that these are like 
human beings once, okay? Like I'm not just making this cause like, oh, here's a TikTok trend. No, like I'm, this is not okay. And I have a problem with this. So I have actually been aware of the account from John's Bones for a while. Like many other people on TikTok, his spine wall showed up on my uh, For You page sometime in 2020. And as someone who, again, fascinated by things around death, the uh, morose, morbid, I like horror content, okay? Death is in fact a part of that. But again, I don't wanna make light of the fact that these were once human beings and like, it's like, oh, it's just death. This is so cool. No, I'm not doing that. This video is just gonna be me doing mental gymnastics to show that I'm not making light of the fact that these were humans. But I was aware of the account, okay? And though I was like, okay, why does he have a wall of human spines? And uh, you know, again, taking things at face value. At the end of the day with the internet, we are only aware of what we are shown. And at the time I would say that John's Bones was really just that. Like I assumed that he was a private collector, which doesn't make it right. But you know, I just assumed that there was something else going on. Like, oh, ethically, so like ethically sourced. Oh God, there's so many, uh, there's so many problems with this whole thing. Okay. So I was not aware at the time that John's Bones was actually a company that was in fact selling bones. I don't know if John and John's Bones uses the phrase osteology as like a way of coding over the fact that these are like human remains. Osteology is defined as the study of the structure and function of the skeleton, skeleton and bony structures. So like the study of human bones, okay? But I thought forensic anthropology and just like actual working with bones, like is that osteology? Is that, what is osteology used for? Examination of human osteology is often used in forensic anthropology, which is usually used to identify age, death, sex, growth, and development of human remains and can be used in biocultural context. Okay, so osteology is a subset of forensic anthropology and anthropology. John John is a person, John's Bones is the company that he founded, but he's not the only person working at this company. So when I say John's Bones, I'm talking about the official account. So I'll say he, I'll say they, there's multiple people running this company, but not who knows who's running this account, basically. John, John is the only one that we see on the John's Bones account. I already have one human spine, why do I need more? I personally think that them using the phrase osteology instead of human bones or human remains is just like their way of trying to seem more official and more like experts in this field or academics or um, qualified even to be working with bones or selling human bones because that's what John's Bones is. Let me pull up the John's Bones website for you. Responsibly sourced human osteology. John's Bones is the leading provider of medical human osteology. We are committed to providing thoughtful selections of human bones for the purpose of education and understanding. We began with the question, why are bones in human osteology seen as taboo? That's their whole thing. They want to destigmatize the bone trade and bone industry. Human osteology. Okay, personally, destigmatizing is important in a lot of aspects of stigmatized things in society. However, why not make it more um, ethical? Educate. I get your, that's part of their phrase, but I mean, they're speaking specifically on educating as in educating like the human body and not educating on like where these bones came from and like the culture surrounding how some of these bones came to be in private collections at all, or even educating on like, hey, we're trying to find the family of these remains. And here, here's what we know about them, like X, Y, and Z. He was at one point selling um, indigenous skulls and or still is. Um. Hey John, it's me again. I just wanted to talk about the indigenous Sami skull that you had for sale on your website. Now what I've heard is that it actually went missing and the Sami have been looking for it. He absolutely was selling a Sami skull. Surprise, surprise, it's not on his website anymore. But I wouldn't be surprised if more of the bones had indigenous origins. Hey, we source our bones ethically. I don't think you do. I think you know you don't. <sighs> Why are bones in human osteology seen as taboo? The ability to study skeletal remains is often thought to be reserved for those in labs or historical professions. Not everyone has the same access to museums, medical collections, and artifacts that explain and cultivate the science behind human bones. We fight to create an environment that is not only prioritizes education, but informs customers and defeats social stigmas. And there is a whole other argument about the ethics within anthropology and archeology span and things in museums. A lot of uh, artifacts in museums are in fact stolen, grave robbed, and should be in their home countries or their home 
in general, the graves where they were stolen from. That's just the reality of it. But let's say hypothetically, if I can't afford to go to a museum, how am I going to be able to afford? Let's see. First one, a $2,200 skull. So here's one of their skulls that is out of stock. Adam Rule Illy Medical Skull 0144. This product is out of stock. Description, the specimen is a skull prepared as a teaching tool for medical students. With its simple autopsy cut for easy removal of the skull cap, the skull is perfect for understanding the inner structure of the cranium. What are you doing? Oh, you're fine. This piece was originally prepared by Adam Rule and has a met metopic suture. The skull has now found its way from an educational device to the public market, responsibly sourced, beautifully preserved, and thoughtfully selected. The skull is the perfect item for the respectful bone collector or medical student. Okay, responsibly sourced. That's different than ethically sourced. And also, just because you know who it was prepared by, there, there doesn't seem to be more product info I don't know, it's okay. All of our bones are sourced from the medical bone train. They are legally procured and certified by a forensic anthropologist. Who? Because on their crew, did they get rid of the rest of the team? Ooh, I'm not seeing the rest of the team on here anymore. So they used to have their whole team listed on their website, but now it looks like John Pikaia Ferry is the only one listed as the president and CEO. I will insert some other uh, TikToks from other creators, some of whom are archaeologists or anthropologists who John has blocked for calling him out on his practices and all the like. Let's go through the rest of this really qualified team. The second in command, a graphic designer. The chief creative officer. Next is a communications director. The only person who actually does have a background in this stuff is this person named Rhiannon who doesn't want to be identified. Then we have an illustrator international relations this is the bone trafficker and the lead photographer and my god for an entire company made up of minus one designers the best name you could come up with was john's bones something that a lot of people have pointed out is that john himself is not qualified to even be working with these bones essentially or let alone be considered an authority on these bones on his own breakdown as the president and CEO of John's Bones. It says John Ferry is the founder and CEO of John's Bones. He is the he is a product designer with an education from Parsons School of Design. He began his journey into osteology through animal articulations and has since gained expertise in human osteology by what? Murder? How you study or you kill someone? Like that's that's it. There's no I I have expertise how? Explain. Beginning as a private collector, he is now one of the preeminent bone distributors in the United States, dedicated to education and destigmatization. destigmatization. John views the human skeleton as nature's perfect machine and the source of endless knowledge and inspiration for designing products, teaching future doctors and artists, and educating the everyday person. Okay, a lot of that is fine, but not when you are also dealing with uh, selling and, in his own words, reintroducing bones into the medical bone trade, medical industry. Let me pull up some of his TikToks because this is where I have a problem with a lot of this. On the John's Bones website, they have a section that says, sell to us. Sell us your bones. Well, not yours specifically. Whether you're an avid bone collector or you've just stumbled upon a family heirloom and are looking to give it to a new home, please reach out to us. John's Bones is committed to responsibly sourcing and protecting human osteology. Now, surely, if I'm gonna sell them bones, surely they're gonna be asking for information like documentation, maybe a death certificate, literally anything. Intentional or not, sometimes we end up with a skeleton in our closet. In the United States, it is legal to own and sell human osteology. Paperwork is not required and neither is a license. By working with us, we can assure your pieces will be treated in a respectful and professional manner. How? Being the background of a TikTok? Because that's what it looks like. Like if that's how they're storing these bones that they are selling, that's one, not even proper storage for any product that you are trying to sell for a uh, market sale, whatever, but let alone human remains. Like this can't be proper storage for these remains at all. Couple notes before we jump in, responsibly sourced. We do not purchase or accept osteology that has been acquired in irresponsible or illegal manners. How do you verify that? Surely there must be something. Do you need a death certificate? Literally anything, a certificate of ownership? Let's see, inspection required. After completing the form, all items will be assessed by a John's Bones representative and an offer will be issued. Human bones only. John's Bones exclusively, what are you doing? Did you finish your tube stick already? Jesus, you know, for such a little worm, he's 
he, he goes through food like it's nobody's business. Human bones only. John's bones exclusively deals in human osteology. Unfortunately, we do not purchase any wet specimens or animals related items. Wet specimens, I assume means like not thoroughly bleached and cleaned because I think that that's an element of the bones beforehand. Like they have to be bleached and or cleaned, like literally no human flesh human tissue, muscle, whatever on there. What are you doing? Tell us about your item. Describe what you were looking to sell. Price you're asking, upload photos, max 10B, submit. That's it. It's all I gotta do. And also it let me skip step two, no problem. So I don't have to give them any personal information. I'm not giving serial killers ideas, but like John, you're, you're not making it hard for them. Like I'm uploading photos of it. I don't have to give information like this is, ugh. Supposedly this person that is supposedly going over these remains and evaluating them is an archeologist or an anthropologist who has a bachelor's degree. I don't think that that gives you the qualifications necessary to uh, assess the responsibly sourced nature of human bones because there's a level of field work that comes with grad work that I think is important. And also this is the person who doesn't wanna be identified. Like they don't have a photo on their website or all of that. But like I said, it looks like they're actual profiles have been taken down from the website. So like me, people were asking John, hey, why do you have a sell us your bones section if everything is ethically sourced? And he was like, well. Previously in my videos, I stated that I source my bones from medical supply companies such as Clay Adams. But these companies were started in 1920 and most of them don't exist anymore. Until 1960, it was cheaper to buy real bones than plastic bones. Since the doctors that purchased these skeletons during their time in medical school have passed away, the majority get inherited. This is a skeleton I purchased from a family whose father was a doctor. It had severe damage on the ribs and the face because the kids used to play with it as a toy. Museums didn't want to take it because these bones never come with paperwork. Museums didn't want to take it because these bones never come with paperwork. Hmm. That sounds reasonable. That sounds like, huh, you know, we should have some type of documentation associated with these with these items. Cause see, that's that's what I was trying to figure out. I was like, God, what other than money, capitalism. What is he gaining from this? I'm gonna play the rest of this TikTok and then I'm gonna read you guys a definition and you're gonna see where I'm getting at with this. So that's where we come in. We purchase them from individuals that usually inherit skeletons and we do our best to sell them back to the medical community. John is saying that they purchased them from people who inherited them and then they do their best to sell them back into the medical community. As in medical students, I'm assuming private collectors, things like that. Let me read you a definition. The process of changing large amounts of money obtained from crimes such as drug trafficking into origination from a legitimate source. It is a crime in many jurisdictions with varying definitions. So that's the definition for money laundering. Is it just me or does it seem like John's bones is bound away to money launder bones? Because that's what it is. I'm assuming that um, if I were to buy a bone from John's bones, I would receive documentation of where I sourced this bone from. He is basically saying that like, oh, Museums won't take these bones because they don't come with paperwork. So we buy them instead. And then hopefully we are able to reintroduce them into the market. As in, hopefully give them more documentation. Are you not money laundering bones? John is taking bones from questionable sources and is basically legitimizing them into the medical space. And that doesn't seem right. Like, again, just because something is legal does not mean that it is morally right or should be legal. John, in his own words, says, oh, there's no federal regulation about owning human remains or owning bones. Doesn't seem right to me. I shouldn't be able to own bones. Even if I go and rob a grave tomorrow, like I'd be charged with the crime of probably grave robbing probably charged with the crime. Is the grave robbing a crime? Theft, that's what I'd use. Is that grand theft? That has to be grand theft at that point. Most states treat grave robbery as its own offense, although some states incorporate grave robbery into other robbery statuses. The offense is punishable by time in jail. Okay, so yeah, grave robbing law, yes. There's no federal law or federal re regulation, well, up to words. Anyway, doesn't make it okay, all right? And the fact that they are not asking for any type of documentation from these sources, it looks like, that are selling them bones, that doesn't seem okay. Just because something is considered medically sourced doesn't mean they were ethically sourced. Like let's look at H.H. H. Holmes. He would take bodies and then sell them to medical schools from people that he killed. And that's how one of the ways he got rid of bodies from his torture hotel and all this shit. Just because it's in circulation does not mean that it's 
ethically sourced or that there's not someone looking for these remains or that there's not someone who would like to be able to give these remains a proper burial. There are people who have donated their body to science. That is one thing, okay? Especially here in the US, donating your body to science, honestly, the cheaper way to die. Not even kidding. Don't even get me started on like the funeral industry and all of that. Like there's so much bullshit and so much like, so much money goes into it. Also side note, um, if you don't have a living will, you should, who knows what's gonna happen tomorrow. You know, I have a will. I have like such dumb things figured out for myself, uh, but that's because I have like bullshit family things that I have to deal with. So I vote have a will. I think that it's important for you to have things figured out because you never know what's gonna happen tomorrow and we're in a pandemic. There are people who have rituals and practices associated around death within their culture. And just because you have gained access to these bones that you believe is legally doesn't mean that that ethically should be allowed to continue. The fact is, is that we know that most of the specimens that ended up in the antique bone trade did not consent to their being used that way. And somebody consenting to their body being used for scientific research is not the same as them consenting to it being used for private ownership. Again, lots of people have pointed out the variety of ways of why this is not okay um, on TikTok and the like. And again, I don't wanna just be like, oh, TikTok is Tumblr 2.0 or whatever, because Tumblr is still around. And also I think that it's again, making light of the grave robbing that happened on Tumblr and the bone stealing that happened on Tumblr and this legalized bone stealing that is happening on TikTok and being profited from and being marketed on TikTok. Again, a variety of people have shared why this isn't okay and all of that. And again, I, it's just sleazy. None of these people, it seems, like even the anthropologist with their bachelor's degree on John's bones is qualified to be involved in this disbursement of human osteology and human remains. Like it's just not ugh, responsibly sourced. What does that mean? That's gonna be it. Um, are you on John's bones TikTok? Hermes is gonna sit with me cause he's wanting attention cause his stomach hurts. He's eating my shirt. Um, are you on TikTok? Are you on bone selling TikTok? Uh, do you also believe that just because something is responsibly sourced does not mean it's ethical? Just because something is legal does not make it ethical. Let me know, comment down below. Shout out to my patrons. Thank you so much for supporting me on Patreon. If you'd also like to support me on Patreon, that'll be listed down below. If you'd like to follow me on my social media, that'll be all up here. And um, don't forget that I have uh, a merch store and also um, a podcast called Shenanigans that'll also all be linked down below. And that's gonna be it. Have a lovely day. Goodbye. trying to talk about the inefficacies of the human bone trade. Um, I'm gonna keep doing that, okay? I'm gonna put you down. He's literally just gnawing on my fingers. Thank you, Allie, Alan, Alexis, Braden, Cameron, Christopher, Chris, Cody, Colton, Crash, PC, Destiny, Devin, Dirty, One, Don, Elliot, Evan, Feckless, Hopeless, Hollow, Jucker, Ray, Joe, John, M, Jordan, Joseph, Kenny, Kevin, Kim, Kristen, Lex, Lisa, Louise, Manga, Matt, Matt, O, Matthew, S, Moon, Louis, The Red, Michael, Michael, J, Nate, Nathaniel, Pat, Penn, Prolock, Rob, Robert, Ross, Sam, Skylar, Simon, Tasha, Timothy, Tom, Wendy, Williams, Andrea.